Hi, I'm Ted from Everything Attachments. We're today with the model 19-12 plow and we've got a new Bobcat tractor that we're trying out. This is what we're gonna be using for our smaller videos in 2011. We've just received this tractor. It doesn't even have an hour on it yet. All of the linkage is set just like it came from the factory. All we've done is installed this plow. It does have the optional coulter on it that's gonna cut the vines in this wire grass before the, the mow board gets to it so it doesn't wrap up on the beam. We've also installed the optional gauge wheel on it. We probably won't need the gauge wheel because this tractor does have a position lift on it with a full from, from top to bottom adjustment instead of just an up or down lift. If you have an up or down lift, you probably will want the gauge wheel, but we put it on there just to show you. And so this tractor's lucky enough to have the telescopic stabilizer bars here. And then we're gonna show you um, the different adjustments that you've got. This right here will adjust completely, so that's not going to be a problem on length. This bar over here is solid. It has two holes in it. It's in its furthest down position, and that's probably where we're going to need it to get our full depth on the plow. But... I doubt this plow is going to be able to go as deep as we want it to set in this back hole. So you've got two holes here. It's in the back hole right now. There's another hole right here in the front. And as you move this forward, it's going to allow it to drop further, but raise less. So what we're going to do is a good way to check this. We can, we can start out plowing and we can see if it's just not deep enough. But the other way to check this before you do it, if you've got a nice ditch, you can back your tractor to the edge, let your plow down. And if it doesn't go down but four or five inches below your tires, then you know you're going to have to adjust this lift. Now, if you'll notice on a plow, the right side pin is lower than the left side pin. And that's because once you get in the fura, your plow is gonna be, like right now, we've got it adjusted flat for the first row. And then we're gonna readjust it to be flat because the tractor's gonna be in, on an angle after we make our first pass. See, it's not going down as deep as I want it to. And that's probably as low as the lift is gonna let it go. Okay, so after we sell someone one of these plows on, on their tractors and they're using it on a smaller tractor, probably the number one question that we get back on a phone call is, my plow won't go deep enough, what do I need to do? And so just to give you an idea, remember that you have two holes in your lift link here. So going to the bottom hole is gonna let your plow go lower. And then you probably on the smaller tractor have two holes on your lift arms here. These are your lift links. This is your hydraulic top cover. These are your drawbar arms, and these are your stabilizers. Now, this is your back hole and your front hole. When this tractor came delivered to us, the hole was in the back, and that's great for lifting up higher. But as you want to go lower, like with a plow, you're gonna to wanna to move this forward. I'm just gonna show you the difference in how far it goes. If I was in the uh, back hole, like I am right now, it shows this right here. And now I'm gonna to go to the front hole and you can see it lifts this up even. So you can see just the difference in moving it from forwards to backwards, how much more drop it's going to give this plow. And that's what we need to get it down into the ground. We've readjusted our side links here from the back hole to the front hole. The plow's going to drop further. We're going to get the tractor in the fur. The next fur is going to be deeper because we've lowered this plow. So we're going to continually, uh, for the next two passes, adjust this side link to get the plow back to running level while the tractor's running on an angle in the fur. Just remember, if you happen to have a small Kubota, a B or a BX, and your stabilizers are running from the outer edge of this bar to the center, then you're probably not gonna be able to use this coulter option. On this particular tractor, they do have the telescopic stabilizer bars, and they're running to the outside edge there. So on this tractor, you can do any option. Peanut's gonna stay in the fur. We only got it about half as deep as we wanted to. Let me go ahead and pitch the front end down just a little bit. All right, let's try that. That may 
may be too short because it's running a little bit too much of an angle down. All right, now I'm gonna level your plow up. All right, and it was still pitched down. I pitched it down just a little bit too much, so I'm gonna bring it back up some. That means I'm gonna make the top link longer. All right, let's try that. So the plow looks like it's running real level left to right. The gauge wheel is fully down. The coulter is cutting the grass before it, so it's not wadding up on the beam. And that's some good looking plowing going on right there. And see, it looks like the plow's crooked up until he gets up in the fur, then it's back to level. That's a 22 horsepower Bobcat tractor. Uh, I've used as low as like a 14 horsepower tractor. You just have to go a little slower, but you got plenty of power to pull. Okay, so earlier we, we pulled the stabilizer bars over to make sure that we were getting all the area without any plowed area, but really we moved it over too far and we were only getting about six or eight inches at a time instead of the full 12 like it's capable of. So you can see the difference here where we were only taking about six inches. It is turned over, but these last two rows, we've moved it back to the center and you can just see a difference where it's rolling the grass over better. Plowing's one of those things that it just takes a lot of adjusting to get it right. Uh, and once you've done it a time or two, you'll know what you're doing. This is the first time we've used this tractor at all with this plow. And if you look at the plow sitting here on flat ground, it looks just like it's all out of whack. It looks like it's leaning back. It looks like it's curled over to the side. But once you get it in the furrow, it's adjusted right. It's level, it's running straight from front to back, it's taking a full cut. Everything about that plow after four or five adjustments is just right. All right, so we've removed the gauge wheel from the plow and he's gonna try it just by using his hand and lever. If the plow's adjusted right, he's having to do very little lifting or lowering of his lift. So you can see how the coulter's cutting the ground before the plow gets to it. We're about two passes or three maybe from where we were last year with our garden. This is our last pass, so I can still drive up through here between my shed. And this is really hard ground. It's never been plowed, uh, but that coulter's still cutting the grass and everything, and it's pulling a little hard on the tractor. And those R4 tires are spinning a little bit, especially on the grass side. Um, R4 tires are what's coming on most compact tractor now instead of the agriculture tire. If that was an agriculture tire, it would be much more narrower, have a taller cleat, and would be much more aggressive in digging through that ground and plowing. So an ag tire is the best, but since the compact tractors are mostly coming with this style of tire because they can mow and do other things on the grass without leaving deep imprints. We're gonna finish up the end of this garden here. We're gonna square it up. That way we won't have any hard places in the ground. So he's gonna cut us a nice square edge here. 
make a couple more passes, and that way when we use our garden tiller, we won't have any areas that hadn't been plowed. Okay, so we've plowed about a 55 or 60 foot square here. Uh, it took us about 35 minutes to do it. That's stopping, adjusting everything, uh, loosening different things. If everything was set right to start with, which we know where to set everything now, we would probably plow this in about 15, 20 minutes. If you had a larger, larger tractor, you could plow it a little bit faster if you wanted to. But this is the, the CT-122 Bobcat tractor. These tractors are provided to us for all of our how-to videos from Bobcat. We've got a couple new tractors. We've got a new skid steer and an excavator to do all of our videos with for this year. This was a pretty tough way to break this tractor in. Uh, we started this, it just had a few tenths of an hour on it. Now it still has less than one hour and we just went straight to plowing with it. But this tractor has some unique features and we'll show that in some of our other videos like the quick attach being on this small of a tractor. We're really happy to have Bobcat on to provide us equipment for our videos for this year. For 2011, we'll be using all Bobcat equipment and we look forward to uh, to getting to try all these new Bobcat tractors as we go through the year. Thanks for watching everything on, on YouTube and everything attachments. Give us a call or an email. We'll always be here to help you size the right piece of equipment for your size of tractor.